In the previous video, I showed you how to assemble your scene by linking and appending assets from different blend files. In this video, I'll be relighting the scene. Hi, my name is Ken Liang, and welcome to how to make a Dark Souls boss room. Before I begin, I want to remind you that lighting can be a long and arduous process. Due to time constraints, I'll only try to replicate what I did in the original artwork. As many of you may have noticed by now, I like to keep each part of the tutorial around the 10 minute mark, and without cuts in between, because I don't want the viewers to feel like I'm cheating, or editing what may seem like a long process into a short video. Today's video is no exception, because I don't want to bore you with the long pauses in between the lighting process. I may speed up some parts to keep this video as short as possible. Thank you for understanding, let's begin. Let's switch to the rendered view first. Blender may take a while to compile the existing shaders and materials if you are viewing the rendered view for the first time in your session. You'll be able to regain control of the viewports once it's done, but you may notice performance issues because we have so many lights in our scene, and also not forgetting the real-time volume shader. What I've done in the original scene is to separate all the lights into smaller collections such as candles, candle stands, chandeliers, etc. This way, you can focus on lighting those areas by having only one light collection visible at any one time. Moving on, the first thing I want to do is add a light onto our candle stand and create a collection for them. This is why I told you to keep the candle stand at the world origin in the previous video. From now onwards, we will be populating the scene with instances of this new collection. This way, if we ever need to adjust the settings for its light, we only need to adjust one. Hide the original collection and start adding the collection's instances to light the monks. The goal here is to put them at places where you only light up the rims of the monks, similar to the main statue. By doing this, we'll get a nice outline that separates the monks from the background. To avoid using too many candle stands, we can also use the lights that represents the candles on the floor. Duplicate instances of the light by pressing alternate D if you wish to keep all the candle settings the same. Otherwise, you can duplicate them normally with Shift D and control their individual settings if you want the candles to have different brightness or radius. Now, I want to brighten up the top a little so that we can see the dome and the arch bridges. I want the top part to have a cool tone. Remember to always try to use warm and cool tones in your lighting. It'll add another dimension and depth into your scene. I'll increase the radius for this light to cover just enough for it to almost reach the floor. Then bring down the intensity too, just enough for it to illuminate the dome so that we can see what is up there. I'll stick with something like this for now. I want to bring up the density of the volume a little bit to amp up the atmospheric effect. Let's move on to lighting the libraries. Duplicate the candle stands and move them near the shelves. Notice how just one light here can highlight the shape of the arch and pillars, together with the books on the shelves. So the goal is really simple. To show the viewers what is in the scene with as few lights as possible, and at the same time, make use of the contrast between dark and light to bring out the shapes. This is one of the reasons why I like to work in EV you get to see how the light affects your scene in real time. What you see is what you get.
Here, I'm trying to move as much light away from the back of this figure as possible. But moving the candle away causes the other monk on the left to light up too. This is something that I don't want, and I'm trying to juggle between these lights to find the best place to get the result I want. It's almost as if I'm playing a puzzle game. As you can see, I've solved the lighting for the two monks in front, but the one in the middle is too brightly lit now. It's probably better to move it to a different place. Let's take care of the right side now. Back to the top now, I want to add a light here to make the separation line between the dome and the wall more obvious. Do the same for the opposite side. See how the arch bridge in the foreground suddenly pops out with the aid of the light in the background. Don't forget to light the libraries on the second floor. Again, use as few lights as possible and don't overdo it. Most of the work is done. Let's add torch lights to illuminate the remaining dark areas. Once we've placed these lights, we can add a wall-mounted torch there later on. The wall in the middle here is still quite dark and needs some definition. I'm creating a dim field light just to fill up the dark areas a little bit on each side. As you can see, the scene is starting to take shape and looks very close to the reference artwork even though the majority of the scene only has the default material. Like I mentioned in the beginning, I like to take more time to make the micro adjustments that I need to ensure that my scene is looking at its best. But I need to end the video soon due to time constraints. I hope that you have learned the key things to look out for when lighting a scene like this. We are almost at the finishing line. We will give our assets textures and materials in the next part of the tutorial. Thank you for watching, save your file, and I'll see you in the next video.